Welcome to part two of our Seeds of Truth program today, Near Death by Root Canal. Now that sounds rather dramatic, but in fact, this is a situation that happened recently to a patient of Dr. Ronald Carlson. And we are continuing our discussion of what needed to be done in order for this young man to recover his health. So Dr. Carlson is telling us a little bit about what he encountered when Mr. Paul Michael came to his office and was in the situation where he was actually suffering greatly. Dr. Carlson. Mm -hmm. Well, when Mr. Michael came, we disclosed, we found out that there were four root canal. He asked, which one should I take out first? And I said, the most recent one that caused the severe swelling in his face. The severe swell swelling in itself is an indicator of a overabundant bacterial infection causing gas that causes the tissue to swell, to percolate through the rest of the body in fluids or gas through the, the blood. So I am not of the opinion that you should take everything out at one time. You fi identify the most important one to be removed you remove that clearly, compellingly, cleaning the jaw tissue and the abscess. We sent the uh, pathology report. We found out he had a severe granuloma cyst with bacteria and dead bone. That was in tooth number four on the right side. Mr. Michael asked, well, what is the next most important to do? And I would located and looking at the various x-rays, this one, the left central incisor, lateral incisor, that had an abscess, I could see it right in the jawbone, and he had had an apicoectomy or a root shave, and that failed. So we took that one out, sent it to the pathology lab, the same report basically as the first one. Then Mr. Michael said, he recovered quite nicely, but he kind of like was going, you know, a little bit up and down. And eventually he said, well, let's do the third one. And I think that should take care of it. I said, okay. So we took out this other one, the same scenario as the other three, two. And he seemed to have his ups and downs, but he was getting stronger and stronger. And then finally in January of this year, we went forward and did the final one on the upper right. And we have photographs of that in the pathology report of that lateral incisor and you can see by the video but here you are this is the x-ray and the one on the right the x-ray on the right shows the, the the probes that you see alongside the root canal the root canal is in the center with that big post in the center but the lateral incisor shows portals of exit of infection that were running out through the gum line between the bone and the root. The one on the left is the first x-ray we had taken, showed the, X, the root canal, but it didn't disclose fully the amount of abscess. So if we go to the next photograph, you'll see the dead tooth has been removed, and what you're seeing at the lower part of that photograph is the condition of the root tip, the blackened, that's like a cadaver, like a human being dies, and that's what a, a cadaver looks like, actually, in the morgue. So go to the next one, and you'll see the tooth has been extracted, and then in the upper portion, you see the uh, material from the abscess material, the scar tissue, as they called it, it wasn't only scar tissue, it had actinomyces and also dead bone, but you see that the, the black root tip d discloses what we we're dealing with, okay? So this tooth was related to the urogenital system. This is the pathology report that we make on all dead teeth that we take out. We have about 410 of these teeth over the last 35 years showing marked acute chronic inflammation in the jawbone. And this is unknown to the medical profession, unaccepted by the medical profession as a cause, potential cause, and especially by the dental profession. They think this is normal. I do not agree with that, and I have taken that stand 
to be a advocate of good health for Mr. Michael. So we did that over a year period of time and he's recovered nicely. He's still going through some ups and downs with the cleansing and the release of the poisons from the body because these get incarcerated in the deep jawbone tissues. It takes sometimes six months, a year for everything to flush out. And that will come out eventually. We call that cleansing or purification or healing is the a term of art. But the, the fact is that we have to trust that this process, and I've seen it many, many times, people really get much better when they have these dead substances taken out. Maybe we can have a look here at this dental chart that you brought with you today. And you can describe which of the teeth were uh, root canaled in M Mr. Michael, and then the process that you went through of taking out one by one. Okay, this chart basically is a face looking at the camera. In other words, if you put it onto me, Mr. Michael's first tooth was number four on the stomach spleen meridian, stomach pancreas. We took out then the left central incisor lateral here. Then the third tooth was number 13, stomach spleen, stomach pancreas meridian. And all of them were infected with bacteria, actinomyces, had dead bone, granuloma, abscess, cyst, scar tissue. The final one we took that you just saw on the video was the left, left, right central, right lateral, tooth number seven. And uh, so that's, that releases those energy fields such that they're now functional. You don't have a blockage because every time you have a dead tooth, you have a voltage, uh, of what we call, the best way to look at it is a blown circuit breaker. In other words, the circuit breakers are the teeth and when they are discharging no energy, it blocks that meridian from functioning. And, and in his situation, it shut down the immune system generally, also probably related to his background the trauma he had had as a young person and many of the work and employment opportunities and the toxicity that we get daily from our food we eat, the air we breathe, the activities we take care of in our work all have a part in this buildup of toxins in the body. Mm -hmm. So so with regards to your health, um, you know, we've talked a little bit about how each tooth is related to an acupuncture meridian. Mm -hmm. And so you were saying that the two front teeth actually were root canaled. And that was originally from a trauma, was it skateboarding? When I was 14 years old. Right, so already that early on, you had these two root canals placed in your mouth. Well, at that time, I think they might have just been capped mm -hmm. and I, can't remember when I ever had them done. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when Dr. Carlson said I had four root canals, I went, what? Yeah, and I'm exactly. thinking, when did I have that? Yeah. <laughs> so I think when you go to a, dance, a dentist, he doesn't necessarily explain to you, well, I'm going to do a root canal procedure, or uh, because they use also the term endodontics. So it can be rather overwhelming for a patient, you know, who's just gone through the trauma of having some teeth damaged to go to a dentist and have him explain very thoroughly what exactly he's going to do. I think most people just want to get it over with. Yeah, exactly. I, I, that's my experience with people is that they really, they don't want to know the technical aspect of it. They don't want to see the blood and the uh, results of this thing. And they want to see the, what, what the results were with the pathology report. Was it infected? Was there bacteria there? You know, that kind of validates their decision. Mm -hmm. But when people have spent thousands and thousands of dollars restructuring their teeth with endodontics or implants, when you tell them that these are potential sources of systemic issues, mm -hmm. they don't want to hear that because they have in liability tremendous amount of undoing of what they have done. Right. Mm -hmm. And the doctors, we as dentists, I think misguide people into the path of saving things that are unsalvageable. Mm -hmm. a, a dead tooth, prior to 1980, I didn't think this way. I thought, like all traditional dentists, that we had to save teeth right. at all cost. That was our mission. And I found out that that's not, 
you're saving maybe the structure, right. but you've got an affluent, it's a septic tank in the jaw that's poisoning the entire system. Mm -hmm. And then you have the systemic issue with the rash, swelling of lymph nodes in the neck, the, ingu the, the underneath the armpits, the inguinal areas, filling up of the feet, you can't walk properly, the joints mm -hmm. seize up. And that's all remote. That's not here, is it? In other words, the doctor, the dental surgeon will say, well, Mr. Michael, do you have any pain? And my, Mr. Michael would say, no. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, we'll watch it. We'll observe it mm -hmm. for the next 20 years. But as then you start going downhill with your oral, your general systemic health, all of a sudden the kidney issues, lung issues, dietary issues. I mean, it's it's a it's very challenging to track all this stuff because you can't say the endodontics cause these conditions, but surely they affect those conditions. They are not causative, but they are contributory towards. And they're once removed, I've seen that over the 35, 40 years working as a biological dental surgeon, that people will recover. In time, they will. And that's the hardest thing when you're going through the eye of the needle of cleansing. It ain't fun. It's <laughs> very uncomfortable at times. Plus, you've lost the teeth or the dead teeth. And you have to have the trust that these things will eventually clean the field out and the body will recover. And I watched it, I can guarantee, I can't guarantee, that's a bad word, I can assure people that they have not, they will not do injury to themselves by removing dead, dying tissue from the body. Mm -hmm. I've seen that conclusively. So Paul, tell us how you're feeling now. I know you're still recuperating, but um, well, well, I've had where are you now? No rash no symptoms of rash and pretty amazing of how I got back into surfing and my energy level had gone up and you, I just you feel good inside because mm -hmm. when I saw what the root canals looked like in the pathologist report especially the last one he took out I'm going like were they all that black? <laughs> <laughs> because I don't think I really had looked at the other ones. I'm just like, get it out yes, and right. send it out, yeah. right? But when I really noticed how black it was, I thought, wow, that was in my mouth. Exactly. And it's like, I guess not many people would think that that's the cause of anything mm -hmm. until you really look at the uh, x-ray, you look at the tooth, and you look at the pathologist report. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's something that some of these doctors ought to really start opening their mind to and thinking, you know, this could be possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, I mean, I know I'm on the road to recovery. Yeah. And I'm happy that I've had them all up. Yes, exactly. And I will not have another root canal. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Very good. The, 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 uh, the corollary to that is that when the teeth are removed, it creates a field of harmony for the body to be able to do what it normally does, and that's metabolize and live life in good condition. The most unsuspecting thing are dead teeth mm. or dental implants. When I first heard this in 1981, I thought this was really way beyond reality. And I said to myself at that time, I made a hypothesis. If this is so, what they're telling me, the Dr. Vole and a number of other physicians and dental surgeons, that when I take the tooth out, and clean the jawbone and send it to the pathology lab, I should be able to see what was there. Mm -hmm. And I immediately got a confirmation that this was the right thing to do. And so for 35, well, 40 years almost now, over 410 teeth I've taken out on dead teeth, and yet the report comes back consistent. Marked acute chronic inflammation, which should not be there. That's an inflammatory infiltrate or septic effluent that's going into the lymphatics through the rest of the body. 
The blood circulates every three to five minutes. You've got five liters of blood. That's a lot of fluid. And it's going to your brain, to your teeth, to your eyes, and it's all circulating, and it carries those substances with it. Mm -hmm. So that's a confirmation for me, and I can't see. I present that to a number of medical people, dental people, and they say, so? They make no connection between the infection in the jaw. Yeah. They said, well, we've got antibiotics. Mm -hmm. We've got anti-inflammatories. We've got many other drugs now that will stop that infection. That's not causal. That's just simply symptomatic treatment. And if a person wants to be addicted to antibiotics and other drugs, Go get a root canal or go get the dental <laughs> implant. Maybe we can have a look again at that x-ray of, uh, of the root canal tooth because I, I think it's something that um, is not really noticed by dentists or uh, am I incorrect? The one on the right, you can see above the post that above there's a very blackened center, area. Yes. And what does that blackened that's area a, indicate? That's the area of scar tissue or the chronic infection. Now, a doctor would ask Mr. Michael, his doctor, dental surgeon, or the prosthodontist, or whomever, do you have any pain? And he would tap the tooth, and Mr. Michael would say, no, it feels okay. Well, that is just because Mr. Michael has accustomed himself to that condition. Mm -hmm. Pain is actually pressure. And if that, that pressure from that center post that darkened area was draining through down to the bottom of the film. It was coming out through where those other markers are. Those other lines are actually periodontal probes that show openings into the cuff around the tooth, the bony interface between the root and the bone, and that's like a drainage port. It's like a dike and a, and a volcano. You know, on the big island, you have the big volcano, but there was coming out way down line and was releasing pressure. So Mr. Michael had no pain, per se, because it was draining, mm -hmm. and he had no really awareness of what was going on. And unfortunately, most of my colleagues would say that would be normal. They'd look at the film on the left, and they would say, well, you know, Mr. Michael, do you have any pain? Do you have any swelling? Does it throb for you from time to time? And they would percuss it or touch it, and he would have no pain. And they say, well, that's normal. We'll look at it. Mm -hmm. But the second film on the right shows, like you said so much, Dr. Yi, you see that darkened halo at the very tip of the middle root canal material. And that was the abscess, or the they called it a scar tissue chronic inflammation, bacteria, but it was all draining out through the periphery of the tooth, and that's what happens. People say, well, I don't have any pain in my root canals. They must be good. Mm -hmm. Pain is only one marker. <laughs> but know, sometimes they will also have um, maybe a blister forming, or they'll have sinus congestion. There you go. That's, that's a... That's, a, that's a, something that the dental surgeon should always inquire into. Are you have any facial issues? How about your hearing? How about your lymph nodes? You should be checking in this area, right down through the, because these are the drainage ports. Everything in the mouth drains to the angles, down through the carotid arteries or veins, and down through the neck and the back, or the lateral part of the back. So many people will have lymph nodes that they are a bit tender, but, the, but we're not trained to particularly migrate that. It's like, uh, do you have any pain? No. Okay, I'll see you next week. <laughs> but cashier. it's interesting because when you uh, showed the movement of this drainage, it went upwards as we showed in the first uh, picture of the stomach meridian in acupuncture that not only will the body drain downwards, but it could drain upwards, and a person could develop headaches or sinus congestion or even ear infections. It gets pushed back into the brain. Mm -hmm. The sinuses, the ethmoid sinuses, which are in the nose, or the sphenoid sinus, which is deep around the pineal gland. 
And the pineal gland is your master endocrine gland, and once that's inflamed, that can shut down the thyroids, the parathyroids, the adrenals. It can shut down the entire body. So it's not something to trifle with. Right, and so Paul, in your case, um, what made it clear for you that something was going on was the return of the rash, in spite of the fact that they were giving the antibiotics and you would have some relief for a little while, but then the rash would return and it would even spread down into the rest of your body. Well, it's um, getting back to um, my biopsies. One of the biopsies were of my lymph nodes mm -hmm. and they're calling it Kimura's disease. Another really rare blood disorder. Yeah. And I'm thinking like, and you know, another time they're thinking I have cancer again. Yes. And then he said, no. And this is a fairly older man and he's looking at it for the longest time. And I just, he basically, when he said, you don't have cancer, I said, okay, well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but you know, and uh, getting back, it's like, uh, once you've had, once I had the first two taken up, I could feel my body feeling better yeah. already. And, you know, now that they're all out, it's like, okay, it's like Dr. Carlson said, it's not going to happen overnight, but I sure can feel the difference. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a slow process, but I mean, coming from my rash and chills and fever, hot and cold flashes. I mean, waking up in the middle of the night and I am saturated. Mm. Putting another shirt on, waking up one hour later, completely saturated. Mm -hmm. Thinking like, what is going on with my body? Mm -hmm. And you know, for no one to really know is a pretty sad situation with our medical technology of supposedly today. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, well, unfortunately, we mislead people. I think in the medical profession to think that we know everything. Well. And we we know certain things, <laughs> and we name them. But you know what diagnosis means? It means an educated guess based upon the symptoms or the signs of the individual. So, like at one time, they called it. Um, cytopenic, let's see, cytopenic thrombocy no, thrombocytopenia, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. That's what mm -hmm. the name was, mm -hmm. and I looked that up, and I found out that means low blood uh, platelets. <laughs> Basically, mm -hmm. that's what it means, and and idiopathic means we don't know. <laughs> yeah. And so, could it be such? that within the oral cavity, there are events taking place that have no pain, no swelling, no ulcers, no bleeding, that are generating a general systemic toxemia or blood poisoning, I call it blood poisoning, slow blood poisoning, that affects all the other organs, possibly. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's true in every case, but there are ones that come in, like Mr. Michael, that are in a severely compromised situation, and he was of the good report and uh, trusting that this might be a source of his toxemia. So we accomplished good work. Yeah, one thing with that is, like when I was a boss, I would even tell my men, question authority. Very good. <laughs> and that's what all people should do with their own teeth in their own body. Yeah. No one knows your body but you. Right. And so when a doctor says you have this, don't take it to the bank. <laughs> don't take it to the bank. That's very good. Yeah. So Dr. Carlson, I hear that you're coming out with a book. As a matter of fact, we are. We're, there's a, a number of events happening. There, there's a current film now called Root Causes. It's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. I suggest that people, yeah. it's a little bit dramatic, a little bit melodramatic. I personally like a film called, it's on YouTube, so it's free. It's called Rooted, R-O-O-T-E-D. It was made in Australia many years ago, mm -hmm. but it's a much, it's a very fine 
um, recapitulation of this issue of oral systemic thing. So yes, we're coming out with a book called Death by Root Canal. Again, provocative, but that's my mission in life. At my young age of 76, I want to provoke people to think for themselves, like Mr. Michael is talking about. Question authority, be respectful. Mm -hmm. You know, these people, like a, a good uh, person with the experience of Mr. Michael, deserves respect because of his life experience. Same with the doctors. They, they don't deserve the respect, but that's something we want to afford them, allow them to use their God-given intelligence and insight and wisdom to help us, but don't buy into the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Question that, because there is something maybe behind the scene, like in The Wizard of Oz, <laughs> the great wizard behind the curtain. <laughs> well, I thank you both for being here this day, and uh, hopefully your health will continue to recover, and Dr. Carlson will be able to help many more people. Yes. So thank you again. Thank and you, Dr. Yee, for Let's all your keep moving efforts. forward yes. Yes. to educate ourselves and other people and to really question authority. Yeah, that's another point briefly. Mr. Michael educated me. Yes. He, my process with him gave me volumes of information that I had never had before. Very and good. So thank you very much. Thank you. Aloha and thank you very Aloha. much. Thank Aloha. you for watching the program today, Seeds of Truth on Facebook. Come again and catch us in the future. Aloha. Catch the wave. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs>